Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am gonna be doing a little update on how I'm getting on with Alexandra's Happy Body Plan and also kind of my tips and tricks on how to lose weight whilst following the plan, things that I've learned. I basically, kind of at the end of the plan, even though I am gonna continue on with it. So I'm basically near the end of the 90 days, but you can still subscribe for five pounds a month and I'm gonna be doing that just because I kind of like the recipes on there and also I just like the workouts, they're really, really good. But we will get into all of that in this video. So yeah, it is how to lose weight following the plan and an update on how my opinions have changed, what I'm doing has changed and why and just what I've learned throughout this process because this channel is my channel, it's my life, it's my lifestyle and everything that I film and do is about things that I like or my lifestyle, everything like that. So that's why I'm filming these videos. Hopefully people find them helpful. So I will be doing more videos like this and also what I eat in day videos. I have been a little bit busy recently, haven't been posting that much really, but that's because I've had my online uni exams. So that's great. They're actually a lot harder than I thought. And yeah. RIP me. But let's get into the video. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by talking about the difference between this plan and other plans or other kind of weight loss type things that you might wanna do. For example, the keto diet or fasting and my opinions on those. Okay, so when it comes to the keto diet and cutting out carbs, and everything like that. Now, I personally would not do that. And the reason why is because, this is just my opinion, obviously everyone's got their own opinions, but I just think that in my life, I wanna have, uh, like, I wanna be able to eat any foods. I don't wanna have to cut foods out just because I'm on a diet. And for me, a diet shouldn't be a diet, it should be a lifestyle change. It should be something that you're able to stick to and that you're able to then, you know, come out the other end and still, be able to carry it on. So what I'm saying is, with the whole cutting out carbs thing, you'll cut out carbs, lose your weight, and then once you've lost the weight, you'll be thinking, well, does that mean that I can now have carbs again, or or not, like, can I? And then you might end up gaining the weight. So I want it to be more of a calorie-based thing, which is what this plan is about. It's about calories, counting your calories. You can eat whatever you like, basically, although it is encouraged to eat healthily, but, Theoretically, you can eat what you like and still lose weight as long as you're in a calorie deficit, which I'll talk about in a second. So this is all about calorie counting rather than restricting foods or food groups. You can still lose weight and eat carbs and sugar and everything like that. It's just you have to be in a calorie deficit. And I think a lot of carbs do have a lot of calories in them, but just have a smaller amount but still have them so that you're not like restricting yourself and then once you've reached your goal you then will think well can I have them or not now like do you know what I mean so it's that that kind of way of thinking so like I said to lose weight you have to be in a calorie deficit which basically means that you're burning more calories than what you're eating some people get confused by this it, it doesn't mean that you have to go out and burn every single calorie that you've eaten that day and more with exercise Exercise is active calories, so they're the calories that you'll burn going for a run, doing a HIIT workout, or doing like a physical exercise. Your body actually burns natural calories as well. That's things like your metabolism, breathing, just your heart rate, you just know what I mean? Like your natural body processes is what is also burning calories, just sitting down doing nothing. So what I would recommend is go online, calculate your BMR, so your, um, I think it's basic metabolic rate, do not trust me on that, but something like that. But calculate your BMR, you need to put in your weight, your age, your height, details about that, your activity level as well. It will calculate for you what calories you should be eating to maintain your weight, what calories you should eat to lose a little bit of weight and then what calories you will eat to lose weight quicker than that. And that will kind of show what's more tailored to you. Obviously everybody's different. Taller people will require more calories than smaller people. So you do have to bear that in mind. And I would recommend calculating that despite the fact that you might be on this plan. It is just good to kind of roughly know. Obviously this plan states 1,400 calories, but I would recommend calculating it just personally for you, just that you can sort of roughly see anyway. And if you want to stick to the 1,400, 
that's fine. So basically, as long as you are burning more calories, which means your natural calories, which can sometimes be 1,500 to 2,500 calories that you're just burning naturally anyway. It obviously depends what kind of person you are. If you've got quite an active job, then that will also, you know, burn more calories. Um, so yeah, it's your natural calories plus your active calories, which is the calories that you've burnt during the day and you basically subtract that from what you've eaten in a day and that should be a negative number. I don't track my exercise, I don't focus on that, I just focus on what I'm eating and then the scales will just tell me if I'm losing weight. I just could not um, be that person to just think this is how many I've burned minus that off that, like it just, get, it just gets so confusing and I'm just not here for that. I'm not here for wasting my life just working out calories burned in a workout when I can just stick to the calories um, of food basically and still be in a deficit. You can still be in a calorie deficit without doing exercise if your calories are quite low um, but that doesn't mean to say that they're really low. You know you can still be eating 1,500 calories and be in a deficit if that is um, what your BMR is calculated to be etc. Also a big one here is make sure that you are tracking your calories accurately. Some people don't and it's no, not, no offence to anybody that accidentally does that because it is an accident. But some people for example will accidentally mistrack their pasta or their rice so if you're going to weigh out pasta I would recommend you weigh it out dry. This is pasta this is it dry if you weigh out 75 grams of pasta dry then you can work out the calories from what it says on the packet however some recipes will actually be talking about cooked pasta and the weight of cooked pasta is a lot more than dry pasta because when it's cooked it soaks up water so it's heavier so the recipe will therefore say a larger amount and they might say like 120 grams of pasta and you might get confused and think that that means 120 grams of dry pasta, which is a hell of a lot more calories than when it is cooked, almost double. So you can really go wrong there if you're not thinking about that. And I would definitely make sure that you are tracking pasta and rice correctly and accurately. So yeah, tracking your calories. Also, some people will have little nibbles here or there. They will just think, oh, I'll just have a bite of this or I'll just try that. That is calories going into your body, you have to track it. If you're gonna do that, I would recommend not doing that because it makes it really hard to track the calories, but that is what you have to do. They will still account to your daily calories, they will still make you gain weight, so just don't do it. Sauces, oils, butter, everything like that has to be tracked if you wanna do this properly and maybe if you're not seeing results. I am very kind of lenient on calorie tracking now because I, like I said, I've been doing this plan for about 90 days now and that means that now I'm kind of used to knowing how much of everything, um, like how much of everything I need. So I don't have to weigh everything out because I can visually sort of see and remember how many calories that would be. But that is because I've spent like two months weighing stuff out. Um, I personally use my fitness pal to calculate, uh, sorry, to track my calories. So I will add in my breakfast, my lunch and my tea with my fitness pal and just add in everything that I eat. If you've got a meal, you have to literally input everything did you put in a carrot how much of the carrot did you put in etc you can't just say spaghetti bolognese whack it in you have to physically think what ingredients went in the spaghetti bolognese to make it you can also scan things so if you've got a packet of something scan the packet and it will come up on my fitness pal um, but you know you'll get used to it eventually do not eat back the calories that you have burned my fitness pal if you put in your calories from your exercise and what you burned if you eat that back you will probably gain weight. That is because if you're going by your BMR and you have calculated that value, you have included your activity levels within the calculation of that value. So that means you've included um, things like, oh, I do work out every single day. So that would have already taken that into account. And if you're then gonna be adding on more calories, I would, you know, you would just end up gaining weight. And sometimes my fitness pal isn't accurate with calculating calories burned in workouts either. I just wouldn't recommend it. Focus on food first for definite, just food in general. I would say to make sure that you're eating three meals a day. That is what the plan recommends. Eat three meals a day and the recipes on that are really good. A lot of people don't like them, but I'm not a picky eater. And I do really like them because I like food. I'm not picky, I will eat basically anything. Unless it's mussels 
or roasted, I can't stand roasted vegetables. I like boiled vegetables, but I hate, hate, hate roasted vegetables. It's like a sweet taste that just makes me go really weird. It's just, it's nothing, it's, it, I've always been like it, it's just so weird. Eat loads of vegetables in your meals, um, boiled for me. It just means that you are feeling a lot fuller. I replace things like rice with loads of vegetables. Um, for example, I made a vegetable curry. In fact, it's in the fridge right now. Um, leftover, it doesn't look very appetizing but it's in here it's basically like a korma um like a healthy korma um, with vegetables in it instead of rice and chicken because that would take up a lot of calories so i um, made a vegetable one vegetables will keep you fuller they'll have loads of energy in them and the calories are still really low so i i would recommend and for example, if you're having a day where you want more treats or you just feel a bit more snacky, then you can replace things like pasta or rice with loads of vegetables and just sit and eat a plate of vegetables. That's what I do and I quite like that, but maybe that's just me. Who knows? Okay, this is a big one that I've learned and it is do not restrict yourself. If you are craving something, for example, a chocolate bar or a cookie or something or a packet of crisps, try and have that within your daily calories and try and you know eat it because if you're craving it and every single day you're doing this plan and you're still craving it if you have a treat day or if you just cave in you will binge eat that item more than likely you will probably eat a lot of that item instead of just a little bit in your daily calories if you give yourself that biscuit or that piece of chocolate it will just kind of make those cravings go away it might make you think oh now i want more because i've had like one biscuit now i want 10 more um you just have to try and be a little bit strong with that but i'm not that kind of person if i've had one biscuit i'm done i don't need more but i do know people like my dad that could easily just eat a whole packet so there we go have to try and again like i said think of it as a think of it as a lifestyle change you can't expect to be always perfect and always good all of the time because if you are you will end up binge eating on days when you're not so good and that is not good and you can actually gain calories for example you can get in a really bad cycle of for example being really restrictive for like three or four days and then suddenly cave in binge eat and then you basically binge ate the calories that you was reserving the other days if you know what i mean basically not be losing any weight and probably not be gaining any weight but you certainly won't be losing anything and you just get in a bad cycle of restricting binging restricting binging and just not losing any weight and mentally that will take a toll on you and um, this is just based on what i've um learned in the facebook group that i'm in and happy body plan and based on my experience with everything and also even if it means going over your calories slightly if you're the kind of person that thinks i have to be exactly on 1400 calories then you're just not going to be able to get anywhere i actually set my calories now at 1400 to 1500 calories and that's because i can still lose weight with that amount i'm still exercising i'm still in a calorie deficit with that amount of calories and it also means that i'm not craving anything it's easy for me to stick to i was on 1200 and i did mention that in a previous video but i just found it really hard to stick to and also i was looking forward to my treat day a little bit too much and i don't want to be like thinking about that all the time and it's unhealthy to be you know craving things so you should do it more kind of balanced so if you do end up going over your calories don't worry about it you're not going to gain weight you have to eat quite a lot of calories to gain a pound so just think about that if the worst um thing that can happen is that you just maintain for that day so don't panic if you go over that day because you will still be maintaining you will and probably still be losing actually um also i would recommend now this kind of comes under the fasting kind of thing i don't agree with fasting when it's like two hours of the day you're allowed to eat and the rest of the hours you can't i completely disagree with that it's just not good for you and not healthy in my personal opinion but i like to try and start my day and eat my breakfast at about 8 30 in the morning and then stop eating at 8 30 at night so that means i'm kind of like eating for 12 hours i'm not actually eating solidly for 12 hours but 
I'm sort of eating throughout the day. And then from 8.30 at night till 8.30 in the morning, I've got 12 hours of fasting. So that's basically when I'll be kind of like asleep anyway. And it just gives my body a chance to metabolize everything that I've eaten and just get everything kind of out and ready. You know, you're just letting your body do its thing. And I found that really helped. So if you don't do that, I would recommend it. Um, and it's been working for me quite fine. Also, I would, my camera just started shaking. I would recommend having treats to keep you motivated. So daily treats. I actually have, and I'm still losing weight doing this, these brownies. One second. These brownies here. I actually have a whole one of those at night and still lose weight. I don't know how many calories in them. Like I said, I'm not so strict on tracking. I'm not so strict on tracking these days. But this girl near me makes these and all of the profits from selling them go to the NHS. So I thought, oh, I'll get some of those because they look really nice. So yeah, I got those and I'm still been losing weight because I'm still having a treat and I just don't tend to have that many treats throughout the day so that I can have that in the evening. And it's really nice and keeps me going, keeps me something to look forward to day by day. Having a treat meal a week, some people will have a treat day a week or every two weeks, which is fair enough, but that could mean that you end up going over your calories by quite a lot. And if you take a weekly average of how many calories you're having, that can actually be, you know, quite detrimental to weight loss. So if you have a treat meal, it's not so bad. You'll only be going over by a bit um, over the week and it's fine. I, my treat meal is a takeaway and I'm fine with that. I've been losing weight and still having a takeaway. Don't overdo it, have a little bit, um, have enough, you know, get full. You might feel really full because you're not used to eating that much but just don't push the limit and just keep eating and keep snacking and going back and getting all this. And you know, you can have alcoholic drinks and stuff like that, like that's something to have on your treat meal day. I don't drink that much alcohol anyway. I'm not like, somebody's in their car. Hopefully it's not the postman. Um, I'm not the biggest alcohol drinker anyway. I don't really, it doesn't bother me basically. And I just know that there's a ton of calories in alcohol. So, oh yeah, if the lighting keeps changing, it's because the sun is going. <laughs> Okay, only a few more points. I know this video is getting long. Okay, I do a HIIT workout every single day from Alexandra's Happy Body Plan, and I love the HIIT workouts on there. They're very structured, they're very organized, and it just, it just makes me motivated. And I do a different one every day. You're meant to do like workout one for week one, workout two every day, workout two every day for week two, etc. But I just do a different one every day. It keeps me motivated, keeps me excited to see, you know, which one I'm doing every day. And I found that works best for me personally, but everyone is different. So I do one of those a day. I also alternate between my own like four to five minute routine of intense toning exercises. So for example, Monday will be the hip workout followed by like a four or five minute ab routine, but really intense exercises that I just know from my brain that is quite intense for me. Tuesday will be bum. Wednesday would be arm with my little kettlebells. And then Thursday would be thighs and like an inner thigh workout. And then I would repeat that sequence again. I don't do a hip workout or any exercise on my treat day just because it's kind of like my overall rest day, but that's fine with me. I also do three runs a week in my kitchen. I used to go out for a run, but since lockdown, I've been running in my kitchen on the spot and that is better than running outside for my legs. I run on my tiptoes when I'm in the kitchen and my calves have got so much more toned. They were absolutely killing, but yeah, they're a lot more toned now. So I'd recommend giving that a go. And I just whack on a YouTube video on my laptop, watch that, so would recommend. Also, this is quite a controversial one. I do weigh myself every day. Now, a lot of people think, why? Like, there won't be that much change every day. You might get disheartened if you haven't lost anything. I don't get disheartened. I'm not that person. I understand that weight fluctuates a lot due to different circumstances. If you need the toilet, if you're on your period, um, metabolic reactions, if you're digesting food, if you've had a meal with loads of salt in it, you're re retaining water, so water retention that kind of thing, so you have to bear that in mind. So I do understand that there's a lot of fluctuations and that's why it doesn't bother me when the scale changes. Uh, some people will weigh themselves once every month and then they'll get on the scale, find they've not lost anything and cry, which I would as well because I spent a whole month thinking that I'm trying really hard. If you're in a calorie deficit for a whole month, you will lose weight. 
this is quite controversial and I know a lot of people say oh they've probably gained muscle or they're probably toning up you if you was in a calorie deficit every single day for a month you would not be the same weight trust me you would still gain muscle but if you're working out but you would still be losing weight so I I like to have that kind of tracking. A lot of PTs, so personal trainers recommend weighing yourself every day, taking a weekly average because then you can see the fluctuations, you can see the anomalies and you get used to that value. So I see it every day and I noticed that on my period I was weighing like five, six pounds more. So you do have to take that into consideration and take that into account as well. But yeah, I do weigh myself every day and I do notice different I do notice differences when I eat past 8:30 as well. And um, like I said, you have to see it as a lifestyle change. I always say that it's not just a quick fix diet. It's something that you need to think about. This is your life now. You're just going to reduce your calories for this period of time and then just increase them again. It's not like a only eat apples for 2 weeks kind of diet. It's a very doable, very kind of easy diet. It's just eating less calories, which doesn't mean eating less food because you can still eat loads of vegetables and loads of salad and still have treats here or there um, and feel really full, but still have low calories, if you know what I mean. And also it will benefit your mental health. It will make you feel a lot happier. You might think to start with that it doesn't, but when you start seeing results and also just healthy food in general just make you feel happier, exercise releases endorphins and makes you feel happier so just bear that in mind also take before and after pictures now before and after pictures sorry i've got something in the oven one second <laughs> jamie's food's in the oven i'm just checking on it um but yeah take before and after pictures because then you might not be able to see changes if you're looking in the mirror every single day you will not see changes like other people will or you won't see little small changes if you compare pictures you will and i know this because that's what i did as well um maybe you're the kind of person that wants to measure yourself so if you've not lost weight in a couple of weeks you might have actually um kind of gained a little bit of muscle but slimmed down which is fine um by the way i'm near to my goal weight um well not near kind of near to my goal weight um so just thought i'd say that if you do weigh quite a lot and your weight hasn't changed and it's been like a month you are doing something wrong you're probably tracking your calories wrong in fact you're definitely tracking your calories wrong unless you've got like a bad health condition that means that you don't lose weight i don't know and the most important thing is to be happy make sure that you're happy if it's making you depressed counting calories or exercising then it's not the right thing for you to be doing or maybe you need to think of more different exercises i do want to try and do some workout videos on this channel at some point because because i know what exercises are tough i know what exercises help me i've been doing hit workouts for years so when i started the plan and people were saying that the ab workout was really hard i was like no that was not hard um youtube ones are a lot harder um but it depends if you're used to it or that kind of thing so that is it for this video it's like an update on how i'm doing in general what i've changed around and i think the main thing that i've changed is to just not focus on it too much and to just be a little bit more lenient if i'm still hungry and i've had my calories just have a yogurt and you'll only be going over by like 100 calories and that will not make that much difference. You might still be in a calorie deficit or you might just maintain. You certainly won't gain weight from eating that. That is what you need to stick into your head. Okay, so that is it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hopefully you liked the background and I will see you in my next video. Oh, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.